Back with the Nintendo Wii U, there was many people that were calling for Nintendo to get out of the console market, get out of the dedicated game device market, and go third party because of the failure of the Wii U and the fact that the Nintendo 3DS sold half of what the Nintendo DS did in the prior gen. But fast forward all the way now to this point, the Nintendo Switch has sold over 140 million units. It's the third best selling system of all time, and it could end up being the top selling system of all time now that we know that the Nintendo Switch 2, or more like rumored at this point, to be Q1 of 2025. But I do think that with all of that, there is undeniable proof that not only does the industry need Nintendo to be making fantastic games, but they also need Nintendo hardware to bring the hype when it comes down to it. Now, allow me to explain at this point, because once again, there's this stigma that Nintendo shouldn't be around, they should go third party, their hardware stinks, they should put stuff on other systems, and I completely get that, completely understand the sentiment when it comes to people wanting something a bit stronger or whatever the case is. I also wanna make things very clear that I think that the industry needs Microsoft, Sony, Nintendo, and everyone overall it doesn't need Nintendo more than Sony or Sony more than Microsoft or vice versa or anything like that. It's that all of them need to be successful and good for things to keep things rolling here. But I do feel that there is a large number of people who do look forward to the quirkiness or look forward to the simplicity or look forward to how Nintendo develops their hardware and in tandem, the software that they buy. Now, there is a number of reasons why I think this way, but now we actually have proof when it comes down to numbers. So this is something that we've seen quite a bit when it comes to the Japanese sales. And I find it interesting because all the people that talked about PS5 Japanese sales somehow don't wanna talk about PS5 Japanese sales anymore. So we're just gonna break down this little thing and then we've got quite a bit of other things to talk about when it comes down to it so before we get into that though guys what's good everyone oj here welcome back to the video please make sure you hit that like button subscribe if you are someone new and click that notification bell to get my videos first now let's go ahead and jump right into it here we're going to start off with the most recent japanese sales now one thing that you can kind of look at japan is still one of the major players in the market don't let anybody tell you otherwise yes the u.s definitely the biggest video game market, but Japan is still a big market and still has a lot of video game sales. And one of the things that I found interesting is that over the past couple months now at this point, the PlayStation 5 has essentially gotten de facto exclusives in Japan with Persona 3 Reload, with Yakuza Like a Dragon or Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth and Grand Blue Fantasy Relink. There's been a number of games and you would think obviously with all those games that the PS5 sales would be exploding at this point in Japan, but that's definitely not the case. The Nintendo Switch is still selling better on a week-to-week -week basis for the most part than the PS5 in Japan. And it's not necessarily about, oh, it's doing better. Oh, it's like a sales race or anything. It's the fact that Nintendo Switch hardware is still high in demand despite the system going on its seventh year, going to complete its seventh year and then heading into its eighth year as the year goes along. So the fact that people, despite there being a more powerful PlayStation 5 out there and more powerful systems for people to play, Switch is still still selling at the top when it comes to dedicated gaming consoles. This past week, the Nintendo Switch sold over 50,000 units compared to the PS5's 33,000 units and the Xbox Series 3,000 units. So one thing that I wanna look at with this is that the PS5 has gotten so much Japanese software, yet if you look at the software, the first 14 titles are Nintendo Switch games. All Nintendo Switch games, all the big PS5 RPGs that I talked about that have came out are 15 and below and most of the list is still nintendo switch games now when i talked about the dynamics of japan and how that's going to shape things going forward for nintendo when it comes to the switch 2 this is exactly what i'm talking about we already have rumors of atlas bringing over persona 3 reload in addition to metaphor refantasio to the nintendo switch 2 it's because the nintendo switch is dominating the home country of japan when it comes to the software sales and when it comes to the hardware sales and there's no way that they are going to miss out on that sales revenue because a lot of times you'll just see tons of nintendo switch software in that top 30 and the nintendo switch still selling this well despite it being old that clearly shows that people are hungry 
for Nintendo Switch hardware, for Nintendo Switch games, and to play games on the Nintendo Switch platform. Just the brand of Nintendo is so big there. So obviously that shows a demand. Want to go right into the next thing overall because they're still buying the hardware. Now, there's a number of other things that's happened in the industry that just kind of paints a pretty bad picture overall. If you look at it, Sony thought that they were going to be able to sell 25 million units for the fiscal year and that's definitely not happening they had to lower their forecast by i think around 4 million units or so they wanted to sell 25 they're going to sell about 21 or at least they expect to sell about 21 so everyone was saying that the ps5 it's outselling everything and one of the things that i saw it's oh my gosh nintendo needs to get out hardware because the ps5 is just dominating and it's going to overtake it everywhere even in japan and that didn't happen. People stopped talking about that. People stopped saying that. People stopped saying, oh my gosh, the PS5 is just going to do everything. And it's not to basically thrash Sony or bash Sony in terms of what they're doing. I have a PS5. I enjoy it. I'm playing Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. I think it's a phenomenal game. And I'm enjoying my PS5 for what it is when it comes down to it. But at the same time, the death or Nintendo needing to rush out the next system in order to combat this threat from Sony or something was completely overblown by people who don't understand the market and don't understand the nintendo switch and really have been getting wrong calls on the switch all generation when it comes to sales because obviously sony's not selling where they thought they were going to be selling now another thing that i want to point out here is that not only are they not selling as much as they want to but even if you look at it there's layoffs all over the place sony laying off i think it was around 900 plus devs but yes you're gonna have layoffs i get that it's business guys it happens especially in american business not in japanese business but in american business it happens or at least not in japanese the gaming industry you don't see a lot of layoffs there but when it comes to this i found it very interesting because insomniac games the developer that's absolutely been carrying the PlayStation 5, been carrying Sony when it comes to the games, when it comes to some of the best-selling first-party games, even they got hit with layoffs. Insomniac, where they make Spider-Man, they make Ratchet & Clank, they make some of the best-selling titles on the PlayStation 5 when it comes to first-party. Yeah, even they got hit with it. Look at this message right here. Like several other teams across SIE and PlayStation Studios, Insomniac Games was impacted by yesterday's layoffs. There are no sufficient words to express our feelings about it. This is a solemn and unprecedented moment for our studio. We are focusing our energy on helping everyone affected through this challenging time. For those who are hiring, there are great people seeking new roles who made important contributions to Insomniac's history. We're extremely grateful for them and they will be missed. So very interesting that even at Sony's top studios selling all the different games, that still got hit with layoffs. So when people start talking about a crash or something needs to change, I think that this is it. Even when you can have Spider-Man that sells 10 million plus and you can have record-breaking PS5 sales and people talk about how well it's doing and everything, there's still problems. The budgets are still out of control. There needs to be an equalizer when it comes to the industry to inject something a bit different to keep things going. And I think that's where Nintendo fits in because they're not doing these layoffs and they're not having some of these issues that the companies that obviously graphics are important, power and all of that, like I get it, but Nintendo kind of went in a different direction when it comes down to it and stated, hey, we're going to have modest budget games, okay budget games, and we're going to really think about fun ways to play. Now, another thing that I want to point out here is that we recently got information and news that EA is laying off around 670 employees, and they also had incredible profits, record breaking, and all of that. And their CEO, I think, makes around... 15 to 20 million dollars somewhere in that range so the ceo is making that much and they're still laying people off now here's some of the press release from ea we are also sunsetting games and moving away from development of future licensed ip that we do not believe will be successful in our changing industry this greater focus allows us to drive creativity accelerate innovation and double down on our biggest opportunities including our owned ip sports and massive online communities so let me just decipher that for you guys we're going to buckle down on madden we're going to buckle down on microtransactions and we're going to buckle down on fc and like the ultimate team and all of that type of stuff right they're gonna buckle down on what makes them all of their money and maybe every now and then you'll see some type of big game when it comes to respawn making something but yeah there were canceled games there's a canceled mandalorian game so you're seeing not only ea but you're also seeing sony they have twisted metal canceled in terms of a live service stuff so 
things aren't necessarily going to plan when it comes to all these different things. And it creates pretty much a dark cloud over the gaming industry right now, right? It creates something to where people kind of get discouraged a bit. And we're seeing that a little bit when it comes to the sales of the systems, right? Like we're going to get to Microsoft here in just a bit. Some really terrible news for Microsoft. We talked about it. It happened a bit ago, a number of weeks ago. Microsoft laid off around almost 2,000 people, 1,900 people uh, from their video game workforce. This was following the huge acquisition confirmed of Activision Blizzard. And it's just mind boggling because Microsoft makes so much money. They do so well overall and they generate quite a bit of revenue. Now profits necessarily not great when it comes to profit margins with their Xbox division, but they still generate quite a bit and they're acquiring all this stuff. So clearly they have tons of money, but there's still all of this that's happening where a lot of good people are losing their jobs. Now, of course, there's some redundancy. I get that you're acquiring where you don't need 15 janitors or whatever the case is, but clearly based off of people talking online, these were developers, these were people who were clearly working on games and felt that they had a job ready to go. Some of them even moved across the country to go work at Activism Blizzard, right? Or work at Microsoft and oh, gotta go, right? Right after they just started. So that's obviously terrible. So all of these things are kind of adding up and it's not normal to sit there and say, oh yeah, everything's healthy. Everything's fine with that. And then have all of these things hit these dominoes. Boom, boom, boom. Kind of like back to back to back to back. So you have Toys for Bob. Toys for Bob split from Activision Blizzard or just Activision, which is owned by Xbox. They're going independent. They're going indie and they're in their early days and Microsoft let them go. Now, I do wanna read just a little bit of the message because people think that, oh, wait a minute, are they never gonna work with Microsoft? No, they're gonna work with them. They essentially said this, to make this news even more exciting, we're exploring a possible partnership between our new studio and Microsoft, and we're in the early days of developing our next new game and a ways away from making any announcements. Our team is excited to develop new stories, new characters, and new gameplay experiences. Our friends at Activision and Microsoft have been extremely supportive of our new direction, and we're confident that we will continue to work closely together as part of our future. So they essentially said, we see what's happening over there. We know we're going to get turned into a Call of Duty studio or they're not going to want to fund certain different types of games. And we're just going to vamoose, skedaddle. We want to be on our own. That tells you that there's something wrong with the hierarchy, the structure, the people that are at the top making the decisions for everyone else is causing issues across the board. Otherwise, they wouldn't want to go indie. They wouldn't want to go and say, all right, we're done with this. And we know that there's been some issues with Toys for Bob when it comes to them working and them being put on like like Call of Duty and all of that. So I do think that all of this kind of adds up. It adds up and it begs the question like, man, the Nintendo Switch 2, what Nintendo's doing next, their games, it's a much needed shot in the arm. We need a bit of good news. We need excitement when it comes to the gaming industry. And don't get me wrong, there's phenomenal games that are coming out, but I've seen interesting videos from people that you wouldn't necessarily say, oh, they're big Nintendo fans or big Microsoft fans or big Sony fans, or even if they are, I've seen people say this industry or more like this generation is okay, but there's always like, but not a lot of exclusives when it comes down to it. Not a lot of games that feel next gen. A lot of stuff is loading times, things like that, which is not even something new. It's just a recycled concept because they went to mechanical drives from cartridges. We used to have almost instant loading times with cartridges. So it's not like that's something new or anything like that, right? It's just something that they've kind of circled back to after not having it for quite a bit of time from like what PS1, PS2, PS3, all of that stuff because of the discs, right? Right? But we've had no loading times or instant loading times before on other platforms with cartridges. So it doesn't really seem like there's a lot of next gen or current gen stuff going on. It seems like with the cross gen and with a lot of games being on PS4 as well. I think overall this when it comes to everything here, when it comes to the hardware sales, you're seeing it. Microsoft is struggling mightily to get people to sub to Game Pass to have actual growth. They're around 30 something million or so, but they're struggling to actually have growth and they're struggling to get people to buy their system. Microsoft has a $299 option and a $499 option, and those are still getting kind of smoked 
by obviously the PS5, but also the Nintendo Switch, which is a lot older in comparison, right? When it comes down to it. And that's not what you want to see. You want to see PS5 and Xbox Series doing so much better because they're newer and the Switch still kind of hanging in there as well. You don't want to see the older system doing better than the newer systems. And then the newer systems also having trouble to sell where they thought it was going to sell in Sony's case. And with Microsoft, just clearly console sales are nowhere near good. I think it's pacing behind the Xbox One at this point. PS5 is pacing behind the PS4 at this point when it comes to worldwide. So that's definitely not a good thing. So I think that's why you're seeing people talk about a gaming crash and all of that. But I do think it's not going to be to the degree that Nintendo did with the NES back in the day and saving the industry. But I do feel that the Nintendo Switch 2 can come out and kind of shoot some life into this thing. And overall, if we get a first reveal sometime in the second half of this year, I think that's going to get people really excited and we start seeing some of the creative exclusive games for the nintendo switch 2 i think that's going to bring a lot of new eyes and a lot of new people maybe into it and kind of get people excited again when it comes down to and shoot some life into the industry overall and of course just kind of get our minds off of a lot of the bad news as well but what do you guys think about all of this? Is this undeniable proof that Nintendo is absolutely needed in the game industry when it comes to the sales from these other systems? Not necessarily lapping Nintendo at this point and the fact that obviously we don't see a ton of growth overall. What do you guys think about all of this? Let me know in the comment section below. All right, guys, that wraps it up for this video here. Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it. Please make sure you hit that like button. Subscribe if you're someone new. Click that notification bell and check out my other Nintendo Switch and RPG videos right here on screen. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you guys for the next one. Peace.